I'm Rachel Pike. I'm at Emmanuel College. Um, I'm doing a PhD in chemistry and I study the impact of large-scale biofuel use and how it could affect the atmosphere using a computer model. I was always a little bit of a science and math nerd all the way from the very beginning. In high school, I found a teacher that really spoke to me in particular, and I found chemistry to be strangely a subject that was easy, and it was really captivating. So I went to university, studied chemistry, I actually took so much science in high school that I passed out of my entire first year of science as an undergraduate. Um, and that meant actually in my third year that I could go to Africa. I never would have fathomed I would end up at Cambridge. You come here to learn from the great scholars. You come here to learn from the people who understand the problem the most. And the person I study for is, is one of the, you know, he wrote one of the first computer models of the atmosphere in the world. While the Gates Scholarship is an entirely international scholarship, none of us are from the UK. It's about 40% American and 60% international. And that is one of the major strengths of the scholarship body, of the student body that exists. For me, the community of scholars has been the entire home base of my Cambridge career. These people are so incredible, and they come from all over the place, and they are so intelligent. And you're already in Cambridge, which is a very intelligent place. That's been the greatest reward of coming to Cambridge by far. Well, I came into climate change because I think it's, first of all, one of the greatest challenges of our time, and second of all, that we need to do something about it. So one of the reasons I study in particular what I study is it's a potential decision that we could make. Um, and we need to understand how that's going to feed back onto the atmosphere. The, what we have done in the last 150 years could be a catastrophe situation. We're raising the probability that it will. That's the best we can say in science. And that also the changes that we see in the climate system have been unequivocally linked to our emissions. It has the potential to completely ruin the planet. The best thing to do is to understand as much as we can about, one, how to limit our emissions, and two, how our decisions to limit emissions could affect other parts of the atmosphere. One of the things that we don't realize about the climate change debate is that the people who are going to suffer the most are the people who are the least equipped to manage with changes in the weather system, the climate system, people who are exposed to changes in the environmental system around them. And those generally tend to be not the people in the wealthiest countries. You have to have someone saying from the scientific community, hang on, there are huge areas of the tropics that are going to be caught up in catastrophe if this changes or if this precipitation pattern changes. And they don't have the ability or the resources to cope with that. I study large-scale biofuel use. And I take the sort of frame of what's called a life cycle assessment. So you imagine the life of a biofuel from beginning to end. That means either growing the crop or capturing the waste, processing it into something that you understand or that your car can understand, and then burning it. And I've actually studied only two parts of that process, which is the growing of the crop and the burning of the fuel, and how that could affect air quality and atmospheric chemistry. Biofuels are sort of coming on as a potentially a potential way to decarbonize the transport sector. And transportation, for a whole host of reasons, is a really hard problem to tackle. But they're not really studied, and they ha would require a huge amount of land, a huge amount of resources, and they could have impacts on the atmosphere in the ways that other changes in our e energy system wouldn't. The whole reason for studying this is to make sure that we do something about it in the future. And we will, but we have to do it in the right way. I'm uh, optimistic about not only the ingenuity of human race, but also the fact that we've come through incredible, tra you know, hard moments before where people need to work together and make a solution happen. We'll do it.